Hey there! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new MIDI file player module inside of Voltage Modular 2. The MIDI module allows you to load MIDI files inside of Voltage Modular 2 and then run the MIDI data out to create complex sequences inside of Voltage Modular and it also supports multi-channel MIDI files. All of the standard MIDI data is also read from these MIDI performances including velocity, aftertouch, the mod wheel, pitch bend, and the sustain pedal. Since this module also supports multi-channel MIDI files, you can also use this to interface using an MPE interface module for MPE performances right inside of Voltage. You can also run more than one of these MIDI file modules at once, and then take advantage of all the other MIDI modules inside of Voltage Modular to create very insanely complex sequences that also interface with hardware or other MIDI accepting devices inside of your DAW or host application. All of this is to say that this module takes sequencing inside of Voltage Modular to entirely new heights, and it's pretty exciting. Let's hop into Voltage Modular and take a look at the patch we're going to be breaking down today. What we have here is a little track I sequenced and then put into the MIDI file player here. It's a multi-channel track, so that means I've got all of the different instruments and performances coming from this one MIDI file, and then I'm feeding that out into different sections of this patch. For the sake of time in this video, I won't be breaking down every single sound inside of this patch because it's all pretty straightforward and basic stuff, but rather I wanted to focus on the MIDI performance side and how you can use this module to enhance your sequences and performances and just have some fun with it. Let's give this a play and take a listen to the performance here. So I've got this running and feeding into different sections. I've also got a couple macros up here for some filters and volume level controls, which allows me to more or less do kind of a mini live performance using this MIDI file. Let's hit play and away we go. This module is a lot of fun for creating little performances and pieces inside of Voltage, and then using a good MIDI controller with enough knobs and sliders, you can really create a full performance set inside of a Voltage patch. Let's break down the MIDI module first, and then we'll take a look at how this patch was constructed. Here we have the MIDI file player, so as you can see, we can load in our file, we get all the basic controls, and then we get a couple trigger inputs for stop, start, the gate play, reset, and external syncing. If you do have an external sync coming into the module, you'll just want to make sure that you have the external button clicked in here. Down here we also have a tempo mod, so you can input any kind of modulation you would like just to modulate the tempo of this, so you could create some more kind of loose generative type patches this way. Here we have the main tempo control, so the tempo will be read from the MIDI file, but you can alter this here. Over here we have the note offset, this goes 36 semitones in any direction, so you could create yourself a bunch of arpeggiated patterns or drum loops or anything like that, and then bring them in here in the key of let's say C, and then transpose them to fit the key of your track or your performance. Down here we have the MIDI out, which I'm feeding into all my different parts, and then here we have the MIDI channel filter. If you take a look in the main window here, you'll see that these MIDI parts are different colors, and these different colors represent the different channels. And what the MIDI channel filter allows you to do is filter these directly, so if you wanted to bring in a MIDI file, but only wanted one of the channels to come out of it, you could do that. In this case, I wanted to use all of them because I can use the MIDI channel filter module to then filter these out later on in the chain to give each part its own MIDI data. Now that we've got all the basics out of the way here, let's zoom out and take a look at everything that's going on in this patch. As you can probably see, I've got one part here, another part here, another part here, I've got some drums down here, these are mixed in here, there's a filter here, this is kind of my master mixer, and then that's what's going out. So let's break down how each of these segments works. So if we zoom in here and take a look, we have MIDI channel 1, this is kind of the main melody thing, so I've got all channels coming out. 
and then I feed that MIDI out into a MIDI channel filter module. Then I select channel one, that goes out to a MIDI to CV converter, then I'm outputting the pitch to the oscillator, and then the gate to an envelope generator. If we hide these wires here, you'll see that the MIDI to CV offers some standard MIDI controls like velocity, aftertouch, pitch bend, mod wheel, and sustain. So on top of writing this data into your MIDI file, you could also input this from another MIDI module. So if you wanted to have performances that change in real time, you could then bring in, let's say, the MIDI from host here and put that into the MIDI input and then just get the aftertouch from your controller and feed that to a parameter, allowing you to modulate and control a performance in even more detail with more expressive layers on the fly. Next up, we've got the second part here. So similarly, as you can tell, I've got the MIDI out from the MIDI file player going into this MIDI channel filter, and then I'm filtering that out to channel 2. Once again, the MIDI channel filter goes to the MIDI to CV, I'm outputting the pitch and gate, and then that's going through an envelope filter here, so I've got another envelope generator also reading that same gate data for channel 2. Then that's feeding into a delay and a reverb here, and this channel is what's acting as that kind of main plucky delayed thing filling out some of the track. The next part here is exactly the same. I've got a MIDI channel filter filtering to channel 3. That goes to MIDI to CV. This is being output here. I detuned a couple oscillators, added a nice low pass filter, a little bit of modulation, and then used the chorus 60 module to get that nice, wide, dark stereo respace sound. All of these parts get mixed into the stereo mixer here because there's a lot of stereo information between the choruses, delays, and reverbs, and then that is getting sent out here up to the main output. Now let's move on and take a look at how I've used the drums in this patch because I think this is what's most interesting about the MIDI file player and this is what really opens up an entirely new frontier for very complex sequencing. The drums here are pretty straightforward. I have a sampler for each of the sounds. I have my kick here, I have my snare here, and then I've got my three hat sounds over here. To filter this out, I program my drums on MIDI channel four. Let's go up and take a look at that really quick here by filtering this out to channel four. As you can see here, I've got a pretty standard drum MIDI pattern, and in order to get this to work properly, I need to interface these with the correct sample. Going back down here, what I've used is the MIDI drum trigger module. What this allows me to do is read all of MIDI channel 4 and then output the gate signal of a certain note. So following the kind of standard MIDI GM drum kit, I've got my C here, D, I've got an F sharp, I've got a G sharp, and then I've got an A sharp. And then I send each of these gates to the respective sound, C being the kick, D being the snare, and then the F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp over here being the different hat sounds. From here to mix these down, I added a little bit of EQ to the kick, a spring reverb to the snare, and then I summed all of these using another stereo mixer. I used the stereo mixer here because the spring reverb is outputting a stereo signal while everything else is mono. Then I went in and panned out two of the hat samples, and then I feed these into some filters. In order to maintain the stereo side of the drum pattern, I used two filters here to create a stereo filter effect and then tied them together using a performance macro. To do that, you can see up here in the performance panel, I've got my drum filter. So all I did to tie this to it is right click and then perform assign and went to knob one. Then from there, I just renamed the knob to drum filter, that way I know what it is, and then I CC'd that to my MIDI controller so I could control the filter live. These filters act as the left and right channels, so then I assign these to input four of the final stereo mixer for the left and right respectively. The final thing I wanted to show here quickly is how I control the volume of the bass sound in this patch because this can be a bit tricky if you don't know how to use this control. If we take a look here at input 3 of the mixer, we can see that I've assigned this to a performance panel knob for knob 2 and renamed this to bass level. If we go up here and take a look at the performance knobs, you'll see that they have a range of 0% to 100%, and this represents a little bit of a problem with the mixer because 100% doesn't represent 0, it represents plus 6. With that being said, in order to make sure that when I mix in the bass all the way it's mixed at the proper level, I had to go in and change my MIDI performance controls. To do that inside of Voltage, you can go to the Library tab and go to the MIDI tab over here, and then you'll see I have my Input Level 3, which is my Bass Level Control, and then I adjusted the Maximum to be about 75%. This way, when I move the slider on my MIDI controller up to 100%, I'm not getting plus 6 dB, I'm going right about to where it should sit in the mix instead. And that's a quick look at the new MIDI file player module inside of Voltage Modular 2. It's a very fun module and offers a whole lot of power when it comes to creative sequencing. For more information on Voltage Modular or to pick it up for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.